Theater owners have been desperate to see success after a very lackluster 2023, but 2024 is now projected officially to be even worse. And now folks are beginning to wonder, will cinemas survive? Will we still go to the movies? Will theaters even still be alive when the industry decides to correct itself? And folks, we're gonna tell you, it just might be Disney's fault. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Pro Channel. We are so happy to have you an abundance of attitudes, of gratitudes, and all of that joy we feel each time you spend time with us. Folks, today we are talking about a topic that is not necessarily happy, but it is extremely important. And that is we are worried that theaters truly are going to begin going dark. Many of you have reached out to this channel and let us know that your local theaters have actually closed down, screens reduced, times of hours of operations gone. And that's bad. Folks, it's bad because theaters are more than just a regular business. They are a shared experience. For so many of the folks out there to get out of their basements, to get out of their dens, their living rooms, and go to join others together for a communal time at the theater. It's something that we wish not to lose, but Hollywood has abused audiences to such a point that theaters may not be serving popcorn much longer. Let's dive in with the panel and look at the numbers and why it's far worse than even the statistics yet show. Let's go on over to Breitbart. Now, why are we going to Breitbart? That's usually a political place, right? Well, in this case, no, they're talking about uh, movies. So let's cover this. This by John Nolte. Experts already predict global 2024 box office failure. This is really, really important stuff, folks. First story up of the day. And uh, don't, don't worry, Mark Kern will be joining us a little bit later in the show. After a disastrous 2023 at the global box office, Hollywood's 2024 is already predicted to be even worse. Gower Street Analytics has revised its 2024 global box office projection to $32.3 billion, reads the press release. This is a little better than the original prediction of $31.5, but still down about 3% from the $39.9 billion grossed in 2023 based on current exchange rates. Here's the key figure. It would also be 18% lower than the average of the global box office totals between 2017 and 19. Even with population and ticket price increases over the last five to seven years, the movie business is looking at nearly a 20% drop. Wow. And even though the science tells us why the movie business is down nearly 20%, quality of product, here's how the sycophant entertainment industry spins it. Here's what uh, this is being said to be. A downtick in box office grosses was expected this year due to production delays caused by the Hollywood double strike last year and a lack of major blockbusters on the recent on recent hits like Avatar, Mario, and Barbie. Exhibition sources have told The Wrap that 2025 is seen as a potential rebound year with higher po profile tent poles and greater quantity of theatrical titles on slate. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I'm not thinking so. So here's the deal, folks. Uh, the global box office is not as bad as the domestic box office. If you look at it from the U.S. side of things, or let's make it even better. If you look at it from the Western world point of view, the, the uh, box office is down dramatically. What, what lifts it? Rather meaningless Chinese box office numbers. That's right. In order to get to this uh, point where it's not as bad as what uh, you might have perceived, only down 3%, you have to use Chinese numbers. And who really wants to count those? Because that's basically a completely separate market that doesn't have any impact on North America, Europe, and uh, all the other places in the world that well, you know, also, have freedom also to, to watch movies clear, they want. Just in case we haven't made this clear, uh, domestically is where theaters make most of their money, not just because of the percentage or anything like that. It's actually the percentage of theater rentals. That is not the rental of the theater, but the amount that you take home or the amount that the distributors take home from the theaters. So if you, let, let's say it's 50% in the United States. So if you have a, a, a billion dollars at the box office, you would only take 500,000 from the box office if you were at Disney. Internationally, it's less. And China in particular, it's even less. So like 25% if you get to China. Those, fi those figures are up for debate as to what the percentages are, but they're the lowest in China of any region in the entire world. Exactly. 
And so when Western when Western companies try to use the Chinese box office to support their overall box office success, it's it's really you know you're not getting much at all out of China, even if you do tremendously well with the big numbers that flash across the headlines. Bash your thoughts. Yeah, I, I mean, and Measley is correct. I'm looking at the original rap article in which this article uh, references right here. Tracking is six percent ahead of year-to-date pace compared to last year in China. So I, I think uh, Jonas clarified that quite well. I mean, some of these, some of the box office returns for distributors coming out of China are as low as like, what, 25%? And that's because of, uh, I believe, the 2012 trade deal right there that limits how much you can actually take back in the region. Uh, it It's, yeah, I mean, sure, that... that it, economy looks to be uh recovering in some way right there but it's not enough uh and it certainly doesn't doesn't help um d- domestic theater owners the, well the and other... you also have to say jonas you have to say that uh disney is largely to blame for this because disney was lifting the entire box office with disney down i mean look it's not like uh the minions are going to do poorly this year right it, this is largely this this 3% drop, okay, let's pretend it's 3%. We think it's far worse in reality. But let's say it's a 3% drop, and we'll play with that number. Disney has got to be the major the, the major component of this drop. It's, it's on Disney. The pain the theaters are feeling is directly linked to Bob Iger. Fair, right. Jonas? Right, no, the, and, and I think we were going in the same direction, so it's, uh, it's funny that we both chimed in at the same time. Uh, 44% of the box office in the years when Disney was doing fantastic, when they bought Fox especially, they were close to half of all box office revenue. Disney's goal at the box office has never actually been profit. It has been cultural relevance and also getting that headline that they have the number one movie at the box office. They're essentially an ad for the parks and for now for the streaming services. Uh, and things like that, and 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 for the c- consumer products division. So the this this is is twofold horrible for the market. First of all, you don't have Disney there driving people to the theater, so the theater owners are suffering for this. And two, it means that the theme parks will suffer as well because there's nothing driving people to the parks for current uh, things. There are still, of course, loyalists and diehards who will keep going to the parks no matter what, even though those are obviously being stretched to their limits in recent years. Well, I, I want to get into that because you're talking about the downstream effects of this. Before we do, let's bring on another guest uh, to join us, and that is the person we were just uh, talking about in terms of what an amazing job he's done. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the show John Trent, editor-in-chief of ThatParkPlace.com. John, welcome aboard, sir. It's good to be here. Now, uh, John, uh, I, we're excited about that park place and the redesign that's coming out later this week. We'll talk about that in a moment, but I want to get your take on this in terms of the downstream effects of a box office that is badly beaten. Um, one of the things that I'm looking at is merchandise. So Jonas brought up the theme park issue and fair enough, but also think about this year, this year, uh, in terms of Marvel, all there is, is Deadpool and Wolverine. And that's an R-rated film that is going to be, you know, probably sparsely populated with eight-year-olds, right? At least we hope so. And so it's kind of hard to merchandise Marvel stuff. And we know that it, the Avengers is the most popular brand of Marvel for toy makers. It's hard to put that stuff out there for the holiday season if there's no Avengers. And if we don't know even what's going to be the Avengers because none of the new characters have worked. So, John, what's the overall impact of the box office dropping in terms of toy sales and beyond? Well, I think you kind of already made that made that point clear. I mean, it's a huge, huge impact. Uh, you're going to see multiple industries suffer from this. Obviously, we're talking about the box office. You're talking about the production companies. And obviously, you're probably going to be talking about catering companies and all the things that are around uh, what happens to like for those companies that are making these movies because we're already seeing them cut back on the number of movies and television shows and everything uh, that uh, they are creating. Obviously, you pointed that Marvel only has one film uh, coming out this year, whereas what we even had three last year. So obviously, I think you're going to see a massive contraction on pretty much everything associated with these uh, movies. Uh, and one of the things uh, we point out is that how uh, I think Valiant has pointed this out. I think maybe uh, uh, Midnight's Edge as well is that uh, Paramount and Hasbro 
uh, made a lot of money, uh, especially specifically Hasbro made a lot of money off the Transformers films because they saw it as an investment where they were able to basically turn in that uh, that first Transformers film into a massive boon for their uh, toy department, sold tons of Transformers toys. I think it almost like doubled or tripled. I forget what the number was their uh, their revenue. Uh, after that uh, first uh, live action Michael Bay Transformers film came out. So that is a huge, huge impact that uh, no one, uh, not a lot of people, I guess, talk about a lot. But obviously, we're talking about it here. Uh, and I, I mentioned Valiant and uh, I Nice Edge as well. So uh, huge, I think that's a massive impact. I mean, and then also, uh, I do think there is a not I know you're talking about Disney and how a lot of it's Disney's fault. I do think that there is a lot of um, um I think China in general has kind of just turned off uh, their their um, moviegoers, their audience, their their civilians from um, their citizens. I guess is the word from going to see a lot of Western movies. I was just looking at uh, the the two of the most recent ones that came out um, with Dune, and the numbers reports that Dune Part Two has only brought in forty six point three million um, from China. That's less than uh, the United Kingdom at forty six point four million. And then uh, Godzilla X Kong is a little bit different story. It has brought in 92.3 million from China. That's the biggest number there and makes up almost a, uh, I guess, probably around like 25% or so of the entire global box office. But for the most part, uh, it does look like that a lot of um, uh, Chinese moviegoers are no longer even going to see a lot of uh, Western releases anymore. Well, John, you know, uh, one of the craziest things about the Chinese market with box office is that what movies you go to see, just like every decision you make, can actually impact your social credit score in China. And that determines where you are in life and the kinds of loans you can get and the places you can live, the places you can go and, and your your status inside the Chinese hierarchy. So it's a really bizarre thing. But yeah, uh, you know, if you're going to go watch a Western movie, if you're a Chinese person, you better be going to watch three Chinese original films. Um, but yeah, that's it's, it's a tremendous thing. Um, and folks, we have arrived at the end of yet another video of excellence, but we hope you enjoyed it truly. On the way out the door, please consider clicking the like button, share, subscribe, click it, stick it to the algorithms, it's the notification bell, and drop a comment down below. Folks, we hope you're having a good time, whatever you're doing. Play those games, watch those movies, and you know what? If there's something on worth watching, lend a helping hand to your local theater and go see it if possible. They need you. They're not going to get it from Hollywood, that's for sure. Folks, wherever you are and whatever you're doing, keep learning, keep growing, and as always, keep having fun.